hold, please? Roll, roll, roll call list. Bryce? Here. Buxton? Here. Eshman? Here. Robinson is absent with notice. Skornikov? Here. Sliva? Here. Wills? Here. We have an agenda in front of us that's been provided by our village manager and clerk. Do we have any additions or corrections or deletions to the agenda? Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. Motion by Councilman Eshman, or excuse me, Councilman Skornica, supported by Councilman Eshman. To approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. We have council minutes from two, uh, two meetings this in September and early October, September 24 and October 8. We will uh, approve those minutes or discuss those minutes in two separate motions. First, the September 24 uh, meeting. just like to make a comment maybe we should add um, on page 3b under special event permits the Halloween just adding other than just the October 31st of 2018 what the trick-or-treat hours are instead of a donut's time the DPW that's the parade from the elementary school though oh so it's village of, village of Orton trick-or-treating no it's not that's number two I thought that's oh I thought you said two okay, okay. page three Trick or treating at the very bottom. That's yes. item three. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Okay. And that is six thirty to seven thirty. But I think we should put on two as well. What two? Two. Um, I think it's ten a.m. Isn't it? I'm not sure. Is that being approved? Is that the normal time that we've done it in the past? Is six thirty? Yes. So we're just dating. Okay. Yeah. to approve the minutes of Council Rules of Procedure Workshop uh, October 8, 2018, as presented. Support. Motion by Councilman Bryce, supported by uh, Councilman Skarnka to approve the minutes uh, as, as presented. Question. So, uh, what, what is this memo here? It looks like Trustee Bright, or if Sneva um, found some errors in, the, in our, the draft proposal? Well, no, these are, just, these are just input. We were asked at that meeting to provide input, and this was her input. Is that correct, Karen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, I have input. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and we just wanted to. Yeah. Was, yeah. That's all that was. Today. And that's on tonight's agenda. Yeah. We're we're basically discussing that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, any other questions? If none, all those in favor of the minutes as presented for October eighth, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion accepted. Items, uh, 
building department report, ordinance violation report, minutes from planning commission, minutes from New York, the BDA, minutes from Historical Society, and did we receive uh, Brandon Township minutes yet? Not yet. Still none? Is that, is that unusual just, or? I just put, pull them off their website, so okay. I, I'm not sure if it's unusual or not. Because the drafts will be there until they approve them, right? We'll be now then to disbursements. Item seven on our agenda. We have a request to pay our bills in the amount of forty thousand four dollars and twenty-eight cents. I have a question on number seven. Uh, what happened to the sprinkler line? Was that that? Uh, was damaged during the installation of the Cedar Street project, but it was in the right of way, so the uh, contractor wasn't at fault. Uh, we repaired it as a village, as basically a measure of good faith for them, because we'd also like to talk to them about a right of way regarding that. Okay. So, so that this was a system that was technically put in by Medical Reimbursement Corporation? Yep. The owner there, and it was actually put into the right way. <coughs> I have a question on number 21. Is this um, indicative of the new phone system? No, nope. new phone system is going to be installed tomorrow. Okay. We finally worked through everything, and that's coming tomorrow, and that's probably one of the lower bills we've had with Frontier is under typically it's been running a little over $200. Okay. I have a question on number one. Is that is that bid already been in and it's, is it a done deal? So this is a $700 deposit yep. on the work that's Yeah, that's the third of the third of the work. He has done the, he's done the uh, stripping, he's done first coat, he's done some priming on the back. Oh, good. He has another coat to do, should be finished up. Thought he'd finish up today, whether put him back a little bit, but he should finish up tomorrow or Wednesday. So we're dry all week. I think we talked about this last time about the performance of the last time we had it done. Is there any guarantees on this work now that it's going to last so many years? If he, we had the paint supplier involved, we've had everybody involved, so if he has followed their instructions laid out detailed instructions so if the paint does not hold this time you know we're going to have to go after the paint company because he's following the instructions all right did, did he strip it all the way down not, not the bare wood or not the entire but he power washed and scraped you know okay. everything that would come off you know flake wise mm -hmm. uh, they were up probably two days worth of uh, prep mm -hmm. before they primed that's okay. A good, that's a good question. Our, our paint expert right here. Um, the paint typically will not fail, but it will only not adhere. Right. There's a paint that'll fail. Is there? Is there? Oh yeah. Depends on the uh, UV absorption of what whatever brand or what I would say model of paint, because there's different qualities of paint out there. Right. So, um, but white being a heavily pigmented in color, it should have no problem with uh, UV sure. absorption. So I think you're right. I don't know who the brand is, though. <laughs> it's full. It wasn't PPG. No, 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 it wasn't PPG. And I well, all I know is it hasn't held in the past. Yeah. Very, very uh, long. When was the last time that that was painted where we thought we still had it under warranty? <sighs> we pulled it. Three years ago? I think it was 2014, I believe. And then, uh, I had a question on the, the salt. So how many tons did we get for that amount? So we filled the box up, right? It says 250 and it says uh, it might be, able to, that's, I don't know what that means. How many tons did we get, do you know, for that much? I could do the quick math and divide 61.39 into 15,000. So that's the, that's, that's the, the price. Yeah. 61. Is, is that a small T right there? Yeah, what are, what are that means 50 T's, tons? Okay. Yep. Well, you're right, better than mine. <laughs> I saw something, I couldn't that out yeah, that's a, that's a little, <laughs> that's what our little <laughs> teeny T. Okay. That's, that, that must mean $61.39 per ton? Correct. Yes. Okay. 
attention. I know we've shielded it a couple of them already when they brought them to our attention. I know Brenda Timmermans, for example. My house. My house. And, yeah. and, and, house got and, one day, right. and uh, also um, uh, Kay, Kay Williams' yes. house on the corner of uh, Allen Street and Church Street. Specifically. And then uh, the Mill Street light. Uh, not that it doesn't bother me, but my neighbor right across the street where that light's out, it's yeah, so, you know, so I don't know if they've been out here to do anything about any of them yet, because... We haven't been notified of any of those, so, no. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I notified you. Yeah. I, you. The one that you notified me of, I yours, yeah. that has not been taken care of yet? No, no. Okay. So, I thought there was one at Crescent Hill also. That was, uh, yeah, right. was taken care of, I believe. Is that the one you're talking about? Oh, yeah. the, one, no, the, one, the new one at this one is uh, halfway up Mill Street. Right I up. that was. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, it's on the wood side, so it doesn't That's bother me. It's my neighbor. It goes right into their bedroom window. But anyway, make yourself a note if you would, Bill, and, and uh, circle around on that particular. Because a lot of times it's not an issue when the leaves are on the trees. But when the leaves are going to be gone, it's going to be an issue. And, and just for a matter of fact, I think it was a great decision to go LED lighting. Yeah, I've absolutely. saved three thousand five hundred dollars of village taxpayer money now in five months, so we're looking at more than double that. So a little over, probably close to eight thousand dollars by the time a twelve-month period comes through, yeah. which is uh, pretty significant. Yeah. I think putting the reflectors on is just going to put it down where it goes anyways, instead yeah. of being elsewhere. It's going exactly. to show right down the street, which is great. Yeah, we were told that at the time that it was easily. Correct. I'd like to make a motion to pay our uh, unpaid invoices from September 17th through October 16th, 2018, in the amount of $40,000, $4.28. Support. 
And I'd just like to make a note that it's um, high or higher than normal because we have the salt for the almost $16,000. We have a motion. Motion by Council Muscarica, supported by Council Eshman, to pay our bills in about $40,000. $4.28 for this particular month. Uh, any discussion? Questions? Further questions? Uh, roll call vote, please, Liz. Boxer? Yes. Eshman? Yes. Skorica? Yes. Sleva? Yes. Wills? Yes. Bryce? Yes. Motion was carried. Are paid. Have a treasurer's report in front of you. I would just like to add a correction on there that it's um, should be FOIA, F O I A, for the Comments on agenda items only. There's a place later on in the agenda for items that are not on our agenda, so this is specifically one that would be on our agenda. It looks like it has to do with the dumpster enclosure, and we have a gentleman here to stand up to the podium, please, and state your name and sure. And it's uh, Paul Reedy. Okay. And uh, I'm just asking for permission not to have doors on a couple of particular dumpster containers that we have. Um, we've got, we built new, put new wood around them. Uh, don't mind painting them, don't mind taking care of property uh, at all. Um, but we have, these are apartment buildings, by the way. I was going to ask for you. That's yeah, the address. Apartment buildings. And here's the problem that we've had. We've got, we've got several of the, these buildings that are uh, pretty much well known, at least to me, um, that people, just won't open those doors to throw the garbage out. So we end up with garbage all over the place. And, and, and it's kind of like, you know, people will send their kids out, maybe a little kid, he can't open the door with you, he can't just drop it there. Um, old, older folks, it's, it's just a problem. So you're saying it's left on the outside of the enclosure? That's correct. And I know the whole idea is to keep everything looking good, and I get it, and I'm, and I'm a big fan of it, but if we're forced to put doors on, we're, we're gonna have garbage all over the place. In these apartments. I believe when I speak to you, I make mention of the fact that all these commercial places have um, employees, probably working age, perhaps a little bit more uh, stronger, healthier perhaps. And uh, so I'm not opposed to doors, I'm not opposed to beautifying public property. Um, this kind of stuff. But in our case, it's, if we have to put doors on there, it just creates a problem. Does the, I have not seen it, but uh, does the enclosure face the street? Yeah, the opening? One, one of them does. 
Why so why not opioid? Uh, well, they both do because technically Brandon Hills, uh, the other well, one yeah, faces okay, right. Brandon right. Hills there. Right, right. Uh, both of them were previously equipped with doors, but uh, you know they had hinges on them. But um, I told Mr. Brakey that if he was going to get a variance, he'd have to come here and get it. You know. Could those be rotated such that the doors aren't facing the road? Uh, not without a tremendous amount of expense. I mean, yeah, we, can we turn, well, actually no, because then the, the truck, the truck wouldn't be able to get in there to get the dumpster. Oh, and that's another issue. I don't know about, I know this dumpster thing is a big deal in this town as of late. Um, but these dump, these, some of these truck drivers, they, they won't even get out of the truck and open those doors. That's a, kind of a sideline issue. I think we could take it up with a dumpster company and make them, but it's another issue. There are some, and I have seen, and not to say that this is a correction, but from an idea perspective, that there are some gates that have a man door gate on them so that you're not swinging a huge, so it's a gate within a gate, so to speak. So there's like a man door inside the gate so that it makes it easier for someone to use the uh, receptacle. But um, I'm not saying that's a fix, but uh, in other words, a smaller door. Yeah. Okay, yes. it's just a yeah. pigeon. Is there a height minimum nope. <coughs> for the gate? Is it the size of the dumpster or is there a certain standard size? Can't be higher than six and it's got to be at least four. That which is the height of the dumpster. Which is right, the height of the dumpster. So if the door is only as tall as the dumpster, why can't you reach over the door and open the dumpster and throw it in? So to reach over the door? back if it, you can reach them. Oh. How, how tall is your enclosure? Six, six foot. Six six foot. Six yeah. foot. What, and what is your addresses again? Well, those two are at, uh, one of them is 850 Oakwood, the other is 1020 Oakwood. So two Brandon House uh, yeah. apartment complex. Two structure, two actual stru separate. Two, yeah, two different addresses, yeah. Is there an on-site uh, follow that watches the property or not? Well, we have our own management company, and um, we have uh, maintenance uh, people that they're on schedule. Um, I couldn't tell you exact schedule, but Tuesday and Thursday, say for example, our maintenance days for when we do work orders and stuff. But if you're asking if somebody lives there on site, no. Uh, Bill, how are we treating the other? Let's see, there's two apartment buildings, one on the corner of Myron and Naren, and there's. That's a four unit, and then there's one that's off of a Granger Road. How are we treating uh, that situation? Uh, the Granger Road one had, uh, it isn't facing the road and has some um, kind of shrubbery covered, so you, you can't really see it from the road, um, or at least I couldn't. The other one's being required to put a gate and they've taken out a building permit to do a full enclosure. The one at Myron and uh, Village Court uh, installed two full enclosures with gates. And the Oakwood condos? And the uh, Oakwood condos, the ones you're talking on the corner of Cedar, they are installing that faces away from the road so they can put in a three. The way they positioned it, the truck guy comes around so it just faces um, the Cedar Street. Right. Yeah. Doesn't face, it, it's going to, the back of it's going to be back. the Cedar, so it's going to be kind of like a U-shape face of the condo. So is the parking lot where you're at uh, too narrow or narrow, that the, too narrow that the truck can't turn around and perhaps uh, uh, pick it up from a different light, different angle? It's not too narrow, no, but uh, the way the way everything's laid out, <laughs> for example, uh, 1020 Oakwood, um, the truck would pull in there, and the, the gate, or I mean the uh, dumpster, is like the driveway goes what east and west, and then it goes north and south. And this dumpster is in the in the corner of it, but it's off. Like like there's a sidewalk that's built right up to it, and it's off the drive. So yeah, I can't I can't see any way that a truck could actually get in it without actually like relocating the, the dumpster and, or anything like that. And the sides that are on it right now are there with 10 inch concrete posts. Um, so they're durable then? Yeah, it's not, not to be moved, <laughs> not to be moved. 
Uh, the other one, um, it actually faces, uh, it's on 1020 Oak Wood, Wood, Wood's that road up in Brandon Hills Drive, I think, yeah, it goes right. back into a subdivision. So Brandon Hills Drive goes north and south. Uh, so as you go down there, it's from that road and that road only that you can look in and see that dumpster. But same deal, and that road, that driveway is a little bit narrower. I don't think a truck is going to like, turn around. I'm sure they just pull in and back all the way out. So quite honestly, it'd be difficult to move either one of them. They're pretty much a good designated spot. Is it possible, okay, so one idea was obviously a, a man door within the gate, right? And then the other one would be, as Bill suggested, another apartment complex had some shrubs or something that kind of screened that area. Is it possible to put any shrubbery around there such yeah. that the truck can still get there and, and kind of block that? Well, yeah, we put on all three sides. Well, two sides, actually, put in the back would be foolish, but. Because the whole idea is, right, we don't want to see it from the road type thing. I mean, that's the whole reason. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, yes, to answer your question, we can put shrubs on, on all sides, but to be quite honest, that's not going to take care of what you're after here. Um, because the front, is, I mean, you can't put shrubs <laughs> in front of where the truck drives in and pick it up. Oh, right. I get that. So, I just didn't but, there with but as far as putting shrubs around it and stuff to beautify it and all that, yeah, I, I don't think that's part of it all. Um, painting them, like I said, the one we just put, we just replaced everything on it. Um, it's all brand new. Uh, the property's kept up uh, pretty well. Um, yeah, it's just that after I was speaking to Bill, I'm like, Bill, we, we, we've done it before. Uh, we've had, well, heck, we've had gates on those ones. And, I think you had mentioned the fact that hinges and stuff are still there. And, uh, well, uh, 1020, the, gates, the actual gates are still there. Yeah, I was just going to say, at 1020, we still have the gate. <laughs> we took it off because of that reason. Um, it's just hard. You get people, older folks, we're in the rental business, you know, you older folks and, and kids. And they just simply will not. They're, well, well I go into detail. There's 40 year olds that <laughs> won't do it either. But. <clears throat> So you don't think a gate within a gate will be an option to allow, allow for easy access then? Never tried it before. I can't speak from experience because we don't have any of them uh, like that. So I guess my best answer is I don't know. <laughs> it's still a door. I know it sounds foolish. <laughs> I know it sounds foolish, but if people, I don't know what it is, but if people Think they've got to work or something? They'll, they'll drop it right there. It's it's a rental business. I don't I don't know if any of you guys have experience with that. I refer sometimes to this as the renter's mentality. It is not to say it's a dumb people by no means, uh, but just the way that some folks that they just don't care, <laughs> and uh, they end up leaving it outside. Do you have a hammer on your contract as a landlord with the with the Could you have? potential hammer the, on their contract to pull people accountable, to hold them accountable? Oh yeah, for sure. We do, I, I'll tell you. But it I sounds like they're not, that's not happening though. You're saying they're not doing it, they're not. Uh, well, there's such a thing as tenant turnover, so you get new people, but do, do we go there and quiz everybody else? I'll tell you what I have done, I was taking a bag of garbage and laying out the yard and turn them open and find uh, envelopes <laughs> and stuff and tuck them right back to their apartments. So I was just gonna say for you know 50 bucks, you put up a trail cam and you start identifying the police to help you out with who's not putting the garbage in the proper receptacles when you know there's a sign and right. you give them obviously notice. I mean, I mean, we have other places that are in the same boat, and, and you know maybe talking with them and asking them what's working or you know how they saw the solution. Right. I don't have the answer, but you know maybe discuss it with other. Well, I just wanted to do the right thing, come here, address it, get permission for it, uh, and that because quite honestly, I. I you drive by these places. If we put gates on it, the, the gate's going to be open and it'll just stay open. <laughs> and that's what everybody else does. Um, so when me and Bill were speaking of it, um, we're talking whatever, a couple hundred bucks a door probably. Um, so I'm, I just see it as okay, two doors that spent four hundred dollars to create a problem, <laughs> and it just didn't seem to make sense to me. Well, we do have to be consistent. Uh, we, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's all about beautification, get rid of blight. I mean, the, the village residents want to see improvements and, and you want to drive around and you don't want to look at people's garbage. Sure, you don't want to look at people's trash bags in front of the receptacles, etc. But I think at some point you got to hold your, your, your uh, tenants accountable, you know. Um, if we do 
one for one, then everybody that we've asked them to put doors on, they're going to ask for the same reprieve, you know? So. Well, if it's legitimate, why don't you grant it then? Because I think it's legitimate. I mean, for apartment buildings, like I said, the other businesses and stuff that have uh, paid employees to, to take the garbage out, it's, it's a different deal. It just, it truly is. Um, does that make sense? It does. I understand. Yeah. Yeah, the, I've been by it. I looked at the enclosure. It's great. It's just as you're driving down an old wood and you looked at your apartment, you see the dumpster. That's the whole idea. Well, let me present this to you. I mean, what would you rather look at? That dumpster? Because they're painted. They got signs. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a piece of metal. I mean, it's a dumpster. It's not ugly. I mean, it is a dumpster. I get it. But really, what would you rather look at? That or a bunch of bags of garbage? Because <laughs> I'm telling you, it'll happen. And something else will be happening if this garbage piling up around there. But I well, like to see your game within the game. It's, it's creating a problem. That's yeah. all. It's creating a problem for, for us. And if, you know, I, mean, I was hoping that I could get permission to not have to, I guess, create that problem for us. Um, a gate within a gate. I like that idea. Yeah, side of hinges, you know. You cut the current gate, put the hinges on, you know. Well, you got to reinforce it, though. Yeah. Again, that's not going to guarantee that people are going to use it, but that, but it's it's, it's at least another option. You know? yeah. and we do have to we do have to be able to tell our other uh, landlords that are pro property owners that <coughs> this is what we do, this is what we did, and this is why we have that, this is what we're trying to accomplish, and we have to be consistent. Um, so that being said, I I would think that you know to me anyway the the gate within the gate would be an option. I would look into if I were you, sir. So. I'll look into it. Okay. <clears throat> um, is now, what what prompted all this? Is this a is this a Brandon? The, I know there's a village here. Then I guess are we we're in the township? I guess right. Well, where the the village is within the township, okay. But the uh, the village has its own uh, governance and its own uh, rules and regs, and so uh, you know we we pay. We're, we're residents of the village here on this council, so we pay both township taxes and village taxes. So for that, for that, we get uh, prompter, more, a little more prompt snow removal and other things, etc., and a little bit uh, better uh, service than we would probably ever get from the township. I got you. Okay. Well, the only reason I ask, and is uh, as, as I was walking in here, there's three dumpsters over here. Two of which have no cages around them at all. We're working on that. And one of them doesn't have a door. Yeah, we're working on this. One. I just wondered if the same rules apply to everybody. Or yeah, it's working on process. Absolutely. Okay. All right, well, I'll look into that. It's not a new ordinance, it's enforcing the ordinance. Well, I understand. And you know, the biggest culprit with a couple of businesses and, uh, you know, behind Jet's Pizza was one. And you drive down Narren Street, and I mean, it, was a, it was a disaster. So, you know, we're, we're just kind of tightening up things and, uh, you know, to make the com make the community look better. So I get it. Um, so we'll, we'll try and work with you the best we can, and, but that's, that's I think, I think council would agree that, that that's probably the, uh, the best way to look at it from, uh, from what we're trying to accomplish on an overall basis. So, okay, just so I'm clear, I'm hearing from you guys that I should look into getting a door to door, a setup like that. I can do that. I'll look into it. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Sure thing. Thank you. We have any other council members, uh, or not council members, community members looking for uh, airing any uh, concerns or questions regarding uh, agenda items tonight? <coughs> hearing none, we'll move on then. We have our consent, consent agenda, uh, including a special event permit for CERT. This is a pet parade. Take place. What was that day? The Saturday. The Saturday. Okay. Which is that? That's the one. So. And we have a permit for work on state uh, trunkway right away. That's an annual permit that we, we do every year. And then we have our insurance renewal from our. This is for our liability and uh, building and equipment carrier Stevenson Company. Okay. Within budget. So, all right. So we'll.
accept a motion to approve the consent agenda unless somebody wants to pull any of those items out of the consent agenda. So motion. Motion by Councilman Skarnica. I will support that. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the approving the consent agenda as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Consent agenda is approved. Items from trustees. Feedback. Subcommittees. Comments. Questions. I'll go first. I usually do. <clears throat> I attended the uh, you know the historical society meeting on October second, and they held board elections. And Judy Miracle was elected president of the Oakland County Historic, or pardon me, the Ortonville Community S Historical Society. Candy Allen was elected treasurer. June King was elected secretary. And two um, trustee board members were elected, and they were Ken Bush and Ron Sutton. Um, next, the um, Old Mill is sponsoring a ghost tour. It's going to be held on October 27th. Cost will be $10, and this is a tour of the Old Mill, and also facts about the Michigan Spirit Quest investigations. And last but not least, uh, they're also going to have an escape room on October 27th. And uh, the time and costs are yet to be determined for that. So they've got some upcoming events here. And I don't know what time the ghost tour is. That's the time we had the meeting. Um, we didn't talk about a time, so I'm sure. But I'm sure all of this will be in the newspaper. Correct? I hope. <laughs> you just asked October 27th, a Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, that's 27th Saturday. Yeah, ghost tour at the old mill. But they don't know the time, so. Um, at the time we had the meeting, they didn't okay. have the times there. I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be in the newspaper. And then, of course, the escape room will also be held um, October 27th. So the proceeds from those events goes back to the Historical Society? Yes. Do we know what they're trying to escape from or to? <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to, I, I'm not really <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. It's, you, know, you know who does that is, is uh, the, the high school aged okay. kids. Okay. They love to do that. The ghost tour is at 9.30 p.m. Okay, got it. It's $10 project. on Wednesday there will be a, um, a township and village meeting with the fire board for uh, the budget. We're looking to make sure that we get a full support and as many people on the, both boards that can make it. It's at 630 at the library. I do know that uh, Councilman Robinson will not be back in town until Friday morning so he will not be attending that as well. What date was that? Uh, that's Wednesday. 24th. Today is it's the day after now. Oh. Day after tomorrow. Wednesday. 6 30 at the library. It's an annual where we review their, their annual uh, budget. We look at their projections, their, their uh, CIP, capital improvement plans for replacing trucks, vehicles, equipment. And uh, talk about employee benefit changes, et cetera, et cetera. It's part of that budget. Okay. Okay. Um, I would like to uh, express, I did ask um, that Bill read this last month, um, however he forgot to. So based on that, I'm going to go ahead and read it myself this month. Um, I sent him an email last, last month to please express on my behalf the appreciation and work of the DPW, the CERT team, and the Oakland County Sheriff Department at September Fest, as well as all the residents that came out and supported the local artisans and vendors. Additionally, I would like to thank Fred and the staff for the long hours of planning and work they put into it as well. So that was um, a little late, but better late than never. And I would just like to make a comment about um, 
whoever is responsible for the witches' night out to please pick up their signs. I believe it's the DP or the um, DDA, right? That the signs are need to be picked up. It was not the DDA. Was it the DDA? It was. Friends of Amos. Yeah, that's Friends of Amos. That's yeah. their their five hundred one c three organization. So, okay. Well, that's duly noted. Thank you for me. The personnel committee has not met, so there's nothing else to report from the subcommittee. And where are those signs located at? Then? Pick them up from where? Just anywhere that they were posted mm -hmm. all over the place? Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess I didn't notice them. I still don't. for approval the uh, rules and procedures and I thought that the workshop went very well as we all discussed line item by line item and we addressed you know any concerns we may or may not have as it relates to that those rules and procedures so I, I think for that I think the workshop went very well that's all I wanted to comment on um, thinking back on your which is night I did want to thank everybody for coming down for that um, it was even larger than last year even more fun than last year there were some fabulous pictures in the paper again so um, that is an awesome event that the whole community supported and there was lots of work put in by the DPW and um, DDA and lots of our wonderful businesses in town um, another plug also for the CERT team parade and dog contest on Saturday there will be um, a dog parade and then a costume contest. So please come down and check that out. And the last thing was a planning commission update. Um, there was an email sent out to everybody on the DDA, the village board, and the planning commission um, with our final draft of the priorities of things that are available. And as soon as I find my note, that would be the um, goals and objectives. And so that is due tomorrow, October 23rd. So please get that in if you haven't. And also, um, if you look at your planning commission notes, you will have the reminder that the planning commission has indicated that all references to the sewers are removed from the master plan. And you will see that in the current information that you received. Isn't there a proposed meeting on November 13th in the planning commission meeting? Yes. That this is the to gather the information November together 13, for that. November thirteenth. I will um, not. I will not be able to uh, attend that. It, yes, it's the thirteenth. So the November thirteenth, I will not be able to attend. I'd love to be there for that. But I'm not, you had your thing right. You did it right now. Okay. I'd still like to be able to attend that meeting. So it said pending schedule confirmations there or something to that point. When was that email sure. sent out? I think the eighth. It was for October eighth. The survey. No, for the meeting on the 13th. No, not for the meeting. For this information that you're referring to that is due tomorrow. October 8th is when it was sent out. Definitely. Okay. It's that um, the goals and objectives, what your priorities are, whether it's A, B, C, or D, or 1, 2, 3, or 4, or 1, 2, and 3. Sorry. You know, uh, I have to say something about this. I filled mine out, and uh, I, I really do it. I have terrible vision problem when it comes to reading print and I didn't exactly follow the directions because the directions were like so tiny that I couldn't read them even when I put a magnifying glass up to the computer screen so anyways um, is that something Liz that you could possibly reformat and send out again like if somebody emailed you and said I, it's, it's all done now yeah. could we it's, possibly do that it's all done well you just know, for future you for, know, that might be a good idea well, everything should be in larger print. But anyway, I'm just gonna, you know, bring that up. That, um, you know, we're. Uh, I mean, that those directions were like I've never seen directions so tiny in my life. So, so I hope we'll start thinking about well, that. That is an interesting point. Uh, <laughs> my my wife has a large screen. Yeah. For that you can lit. It's illuminated, and you can look. You can put your picture underneath of it, and you can. It brings it up as you're reading. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a hard copy. And she also has a, because she's had detached retina, 
couple of them. And so basically also uh, she has eliminated and backlighting. You can change the backlight on your on your iPads. You know, it's really, really helpful. And plus to change the fronts. Yeah. So I mean there's there's a lot of good things out there for people that are challenged. Yeah, and it was visually. If it's uh, not non PDF, you can also go and change the font size. <laughs> well, the 12 font is standard, but 16 font is ADA compliant. So, I mean, that's something to keep in mind if you're creating things. It should be compliant, not necessarily standard. Well, anyway, I we just want, thought I want to help you out. Yeah, all of us. <laughs> you know, I, I, I guess I'm going to have to get a little more creative as well. But I thought I'd bring it up. Okay, good point. Thank you. Um, let's see. I have uh, been in dialogue with Mark Robinson on the Streets Committee, and uh, we have some very good feedback to give the community with respect to the speed limit signs. And uh, there's been contact with Lieutenant Glover, and uh, he's uh, collecting data and information uh, for those people that are not obeying them. He's got uh, he's got dates and times, and uh, so they're going to be. And that was the whole idea of this whole project was to identify the precise time so that they could be more uh, effective with their patrols. So we know when the speeders are doing their their thing, and uh, hopefully we can get that squared away. And they are rotating them. Uh, uh, the DPW is rotating those signs, and uh, so. Uh, I know that Mark would like to see, as would I, uh, the potential purchase of perhaps at least one, if not two more. So, uh, is there any further cost breaks available on, on such a thing? I can call. Okay. And the, the, the cost again was what, about three, thirty-five hundred pieces? Uh, it was about, well, total was about fifty-six hundred. I'd have to look it up. But or two? For two, or two, twenty-seven hundred fifty. Piece. Yeah, they're like twenty-seven hundred piece, and almost under six. So, uh, any other feedback from the council on the what, what you've noticed or not noticed? Or yeah, I've noticed the general slowdown. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to ask, do we have a date as to when they're going to start rotating? They already have. They did. It went from uh, southbound Church Street, for example, down to northbound Church Street. They just did that, okay. and uh, they uh, it's over by the footbridge. I don't know if they're going to move that anytime soon. I noticed when I came into town yes, uh, yesterday, um, it was not. Thursday, Thursday it, it died was, out. It oh, needed to be charged, so they okay. pulled it off to be charged. And Is that not solar? Or? No, they're not solar. So does, um, does the office receive like a little, I mean, is that something that you can, like, you know remotely, or is it something you just gotta check on? Uh, it's something uh, that's, they last for about two weeks. So okay. we, just, uh, we just need to be more disciplined at pulling them off. Mark, I'm, yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm talking about when I came into town, it's like the one sign wasn't registering the speed. And they're they're pretty much like clockwork. They, <laughs> like 13 days, if you know. So what we're trying to get them to do is, in, and I'll talk to Bob, is, can operate on one battery, so theoretically you could at like day 10 go up, take one battery from one and one from the other, charge them, go back out, put them both in, put them both in. So they're never going to be down. So they're never down that way. So we just got we've they've had a lot on their plate here, getting ready for winter. And uh, so are these recycled or uh, rechargeable batteries? Or yeah, they are. Okay, they're 10 year rechargeable. I'd be interested to hear from Lieutenant Glover on um, the statistics, the report that those are generating as soon as he has that and he's analyzed it. I, I think they're very effective, but I got to tell you that one needs to go back on Mill Street because I got cars going anywhere from 50 to 70 mile an hour down there. Mm -hmm. I was going to say the same thing, Mill Street up. Yeah. And, and that's why you take uh, uh, both ends of Mill Street would be probably a wise council. Uh, might want to think about that and consider it and uh, move forward if we can find the proper line and pull the money out of it. So, anybody have a dissenting point of view otherwise? Well, the only thing I'm thinking is it's only going to last till so long until people figure out that it's, 
it's only there to deter. It's not, not taking pictures and tickets. Yeah. No, but people He's assumed at first it. that it was taking pictures, so everybody slowed way down. But I think, you know, oh, I, I've never heard the people versus moving pictures. them around. That was just no, I think if, as long as Sergeant Glover thinks it's a good tool to, to Lieutenant, Lieutenant, sorry, sorry, um, <laughs> then I think it's I think it's wise. I think they do take pictures. Yeah. They do. Well, I don't know. I that's what I heard. That's what I heard. They take good, good pictures. No, <laughs> my car's oh, really good. Regardless, I think I think it's important. I think if we can get them for the deal, I think we ought to get two more. I think it'd be nice to talk with them and see what. So that's, I'll get you. Am I hearing consensus on that? I'll get you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you want to quote for the next meeting? Sure. Good idea. And um, Bill, if you could resend that email to me uh, for that. I just, I just went through my emails and I never received that email that's due tomorrow. The Planning Commission information. You resend it to me. It's, I think it's the DDA, isn't it? No, I said. Oh, okay. yeah, because I, yeah, I don't have it. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to our agenda, we have item 12, public hearing. Uh, we're we're going to be receiving public input on the <coughs> annual CDBG money, and this is for a project uh, for 2019. So at this point in time, if the public, any member of the public has a as an opinion as to where the money might possibly go, and this would be a good time to to uh, give council your point of view. So. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Seems like I'm always here just begging money. Your name and your name and uh, Bob MacArthur, I'm the chairman of the Brandon Whirlwind Youth Assistance, which consists of four executive board members and about. Uh, 10 members and a handful of volunteers. The, uh, we, currently, we, uh, we received CDBG money from Brandon Township, and we got some from Groveland Township last year. Groveland Township is in jeopardy this year. I'm not sure they're submitting for the 2019 CDBG funds for reasons I don't know. But uh, we do currently receive them from Brandon Township. And one of the rules fell uh, that we were unaware of last year that you had the well, only ones we could submit reimbursement from was 13 and over. And obviously, we do a lot of under 13 scholarships for through recreations, which caused the problem. Uh, my thought was that uh, come to the village and ask for CDBG funds, and then we can do under 13 in one municipality and over 13 in the other. And currently those funds are being used, uh, we have uh, what we call challenge day at the high school. We're funding that one, that's $4,000 to fund that program. About 70% of the kids that attend that meet the requirements that fall under HUD so that we can get reimbursement through CDBG to pay for that. We have to pay for it in advance, and then after the bill's paid and the money becomes available through the county, which typically takes, uh, we wouldn't receive that money probably until 2020, or yeah, 2020. It's just kind of the way that works. It takes a while to get all that through. But the Challenge Day is a big program. Uh, that's obviously all the over 13, and we'll probably stick that with the township because I can, I can get more money out of the township because of the population. It's not because they donate more more concern, but it's just because they get, they get more funds. But that, uh, that challenge day deals with uh, whether the child is homeless, uh, have addictions, eating disorders, uh, a death in the family, some bullying, uh, students leave that program empowered of talking that out with other students, which is really powerful. At first, it doesn't, uh, it didn't seem to me, because I, I did a, a volunteer the first year we did it, and I just couldn't believe how powerful it was. Even for the 30 volunteer, we only, yeah, 25 volunteer adults to be there all of a sudden 
fell right into the same issues that the kids did with, uh, like I say, the bullying, uh, abuse at the home between parents or abuse to that child for one reason or one thing or another. And they were able to, uh, as the day went on, it's a full day at school, and they're able to bring that out of one another and be able to tell another student what they, what they went through and what they suffered with. Uh, and, and they're just amazed uh, when they come out of there that I just cannot believe that so-and-so or so many other kids had the same issues as what I did. And I think they're going through life thinking, this is only happening to me and not to everybody else. So that's a big program. It's very expensive and it's uh, $4,000. We do skill building, uh, typically that's under 13, and that, that's uh, mostly through Brandon Rec for all the programs, the uh, volleyball, soccer, golf, baseball, football, t-ball, cheerleading, tennis, and wrestling and basketball. Those programs, if, again, if the family meets uh, the HUD requirements, uh, we're able to fund that program with a, they have to make a minimal down payment uh, to, because we want to secure the, the spot and get some commitment out of, the, out of the parent. We do a program at the library who uh, supports uh, Brandon Grove and Youth Assistant. Uh, it's called Love and Logic. Uh, they've done as many as 17 families our last one wasn't as large, it was like seven families, but uh, when you start getting up into 17 families going through this program, it's huge. And, uh, oh, let's see. The programs that we're doing, uh, we do youth recognition. I think most of you have been to that or participated into it. That's around, uh, I think they did 107 kids last year and I'm guessing it's gonna be probably pretty darn close to that again this year. That's not a reimbursable project. So we have to take that out of our budget and we can't get CDBG funds for that. And that's the reason for getting the CDBG. Whatever we can cover, we get to spend more money on projects like Love and Logic. Um, we have a summer program where we send kids off to uh, summer camp for a week Typically, I don't know if you know where Cap Colt Mechanic is. It's mm -hmm. over at Fenton. And we send uh, anywhere from five to 10 kids to that, uh, that program. And the ones that go to that are, are chosen either by principals or somebody at the school, uh, our caseworker. There's several folks that uh, recognize that this student can use the support and getting off the camp uh, for the week. And again, uh, for us to fund it, we, again, they have to meet those HUD requirements of CDBG. Um, we are providing uh, drivers training through the 13s and over. Last year we bought graphic cal calculators for the entire algebra, algebra programs at the high school and those calculators are handed out to students that again meet our requirement and they return it and then the next class session they get to use them and those are excuse me uh, about a hundred hundred and ten dollars a calculator that one was a shocker to me because I didn't realize that in order to graduate you had to have algebra one and two I've never made it <laughs> I know that for sure but we do, uh, we do programs like the driver's training. Again, those, we only fund those under special circumstances of the family. Again, those, are, those come to us recommended by typically somebody at the school that says, you know, this student is not going to get it. They're not going to get driver's training. It isn't gonna happen. Uh, parents will, it's 300 and some dollars. So we, uh, we do a few of those every year. Those are CDBG refundable. And we do a, a, a suicide prevention, which is growing. Our program is growing. Uh, Matt uh, Jenkins and Judy uh, Miracle 
are pushers on that, trying to get that program moving forward, getting it to the students and to the parents. Uh, we just did 1,500 emergency cards which went to the high school students and to the middle school students. And uh, those were handed out. It's a small card, has emergency numbers on it for just about any kind of problem that a young person could come across. Every, everything from suicide, bullying, uh, pregnancy, ton of family problems, issues, things that could be at school, and to give them several numbers to be able to call to, uh, to get help or to get it reported and confidentially. And we get supported by that from the Masons, support that. They purchase the cards uh, to be able to hand out to the kids. And we, we do just a few kids through our caseworker, which is uh, Reagan Rockwell. She's assigned to us through Oakland County court system. And we get a few kids through uh, there that are problems, serious problems. And she's trying to keep them out of the court system. So they end up going off to boot camp or some special counseling and that could involve drugs and any number of issues. Um, and, but uh, there's one that, uh, a boot camp where they get sent away for a week which is a little bit intense, but again, it's voluntary. A parent uh, isn't required by court to take, send their kid to that. So if they can't afford it, they're not gonna go. Again, those are expensive. And those are refundable under CDBG. So, and they're typically over 13. Those are usually not the, not the young minors. So you can see that uh, Having that split in the, in the CDBG, getting some funds from the village would definitely help out the programs because the more we get refunded, the more we can do that are not funded programs. And so it spreads that out. And uh, I know you can't ask any questions right now, but uh, anytime uh, any of you have any questions, uh, you know how to get a hold of me. Uh, uh, the program's moving along quickly. We're getting a, a lot of different things. Uh, we. We've touched at least 1,500 kids, I'm sorry, about 650 kids, and not counting the 1,500 cards that we sent out. So it, it's been a good program, and, and we'll take whatever the village is prepared to give of CDBG, and I know you have other folks that want it too. So whatever you can uh, work out would be great for us. Thank you. So, so Bob, don't walk away yet. I'd like to ask President Will's permission for me to ask him a question. If we're going to be, we have recommended uh, motions here. Mm -hmm. No. no. Well, not, not well, one of the, well, well, we do, we do. We, we, we can, we can ask further questions, follow-up questions after the public hearing is closed. Okay. Okay. All right. So, thank you. Yeah, Bob. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Any other comments on the CDBG? And Shelby's one of our board members. Ah. Okay, so the, hearing no other public, then we'll move on to new business, which is Just close the public hearing. Yeah, close it. Okay. We didn't know that. We did it at 7.53. Mm-hmm. Huh? We did it at 7.53. Okay. Not formally. <laughs> Thank you. The public hearing's now closed. public hearing for the purpose of offering an opportunity for citizens to express their ideas on community needs and uh, project proposals. We have in front of us uh, uh, the amount of $7,000 for uh, the, now is that calendar year 2019 or is that our fiscal year? Uh, it's fiscal. Fiscal year? Yep. Our fiscal year beginning July 1 of 19. And that's when your CDBG fund starts well. Right. Okay. So, uh, beginning then July 1 of 19, the amount of $7,000, uh, we have a couple different options, and none of the options, uh, motions, uh, are specific as to the eventual recipient, and this is by law, 
and uh, so generally speaking, we have three opportunities for public services via emergency services and then uh, youth services or any combination thereof. And if I might make a suggestion, if you do choose youth services, um, we do have the option of including in that motion uh, for the 13 and under, that would be child care services. So you can put that in one application if we so choose. In just number two or number two and number three option? Uh, I believe it would be just the number two option. So you don't think you could delineate uh, if we chose number three? You, you, would you could further delineate the is it because the amount of the funds are correct too small? Correct. Okay. So you would either do um, your amount towards youth services or towards child care services, one or the other. Now, historically, uh, as a background for those in the audience and uh, our public at home, uh, this was previously six thousand dollars. Correct. For the current fiscal year. Correct. Okay. Was it eight this year? 2017. Oh, okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the application of resolution allocating program year 2019 CDBG funds in the amount of $3,500 to public services emergency services and $3,500 to public services youth services. Support. by Councilman Skornick is supported by Councilman Butsu to essentially split the funds between two agencies or two uh, potential potential recipient slash vendors in the amount of $3,500 each. Any other questions, comments? I, I have a question and it has to do with the brand new Global Global and Youth Assistance Program. And so uh, if you don't mind, I ask that Bob maybe get what is the uh, annual revenue that the Brandon Groveland Youth Assistance Program brings in every year? Brings in $3,000 from the township. Uh, the village up there's to $2,000. Groveland Township does $2,500. And then we get in-kind services from Brandon Schools and the library and Brandon Rec. Uh, is just in kind of services. So we um, we roughly get somewhere around seven or eight thousand dollars. That doesn't include the fundraising that we do ourselves. Uh, we do some fundraising. It's typically minimal. Our board is not made up of I be careful with this with <laughs> fundraisers. All right. They're they're typically not uh, they're, they're folks that are have a deep concern for the kids. But the, the, uh, our meetings are more brainstorming of what we can and can't do and, and how in the world we're going to do it. We have, uh, we lost Christy Span, which was huge to us. And uh, of course to the school too and the community. But uh, we now have Diane Zidane, I don't know if you're familiar with her. And it's, we have another good one uh, that is a representative from the school for us who has, has a passion for kids. That's where we're at, and and I do have a question with that, Liz. That didn't we talk about that with the child care was the under thirteen? Correct. Child care services would be we could do that towards children under thirteen. Correct, and 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 that's what I would prefer from the village and get the youth from the township because I because they have more funds available. And that we and I can request the one for youth from them, and to where if the village did it for the child, we can get the th under twelve and under from the from the village. But you said you couldn't do that because but the motion I made, yeah, the motion, the, motion I, yeah. the motion that I, I did was option three because with the other funds that we allocate, it also stays in the community. So I, I thought it was a win-win for the whole community as a it is. I think I just didn't have an a, a, a updated motion in time. So I think what Bob is asking is just to change youth services to child care services. 
Oh, that, okay. Oh, that's what I asked if we could do that for three, but you said no, not with that amount. No, you no, could split, split it between youth and child Oh, care. that was, okay, that's oh, good. That wasn't what I was asking, so it's just good. classification. Yeah. Okay. So, so we can change it. I so you want to see a change to child, we will have to amend it. Hang on, so we'll have to, uh, to uh, child, child care services or child? I think so. I think Liz, that's the term. It's public services, child care services. Okay, so child I'll, care I'll services. amend my motion to that. You cannot believe the friend has been involved with CEBG. It's a huge pain. It's a huge, going to be a huge pain uh, it is for the clerk. Because typically when you're doing emergency services, it's lump sums. This will be a little bit here, a little bit there. It's, it is a big challenge for uh, your office to, to get through this and, uh, and I really appreciate it. I've been involved with it for a long time so I have a lot of help for that but I cause an awful lot of the problems. Oh, you cause the problems. Yeah, I know. But maybe we'll change it. Okay, so we have, we have a, a motion has been amended. Uh, Mr. Butsu, will you accept uh, yes. this modification as well? I just like to comment. The reason I asked Bob is that there are some um, groups that take in a significant amount of money, and uh, the 3,500 is minuscule to the amount of money they can bring in. But with this case, you're talking about a 50% increase in in funding to your uh, program or to the Grand and Broadland Youth Assistance Program, which is significant. So right. that's what I wanted to understand. Oh, and there's organizations out there that I keep on the hook that if we get a program where it's something significant that come up, that, uh, you know, I've had discussions with them that to bring something to them, they let them sponsor it, they'd be more than glad to do it. So it, uh, we've been trying to juggle those funds back and forth. Like using the CBG, I, you know, it's money. It's grant money that we get back. And it takes a while, we have to budget to expend it one year and we don't get it back until the following year. So it makes a little bit of juggling, but uh, we've all felt it's worth it. So thank you. Good job. Thank you. Okay, so we have a uh, motion and we have support for the amended motion. Uh, so we'll vote on that at this point in time, unless anyone has any further discussion. Hearing none. Uh, I don't know if this requires a roll call vote this start, does it? Well, we're dispersing money, we're not spending village money. May as well. Just to just be so, safe. Yeah, so Carla doesn't come after me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in that case. <laughs> roll call vote, please. Eshman? Yes. Cornica? Yes. Sleva? Yes. Wills? Yes. Bryce? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So now we have unfinished business, uh, item 14, uh, A, B, and C. Uh, are we going to handle this as uh, if there's any questions or are you going to go? What do you want to do? Pretty much. If there's any questions, master plan, we got the joint meeting, you know, the survey is due tomorrow. That's pretty much where we're at. So still have an open seat on the Still got an open seat on the Planning Commission, so. Okay. And they are very busy trying to okay. find people. And of course the rules and procedures, uh, we've talked about that slightly. Uh, we did have a study session on the 8th, and uh, we had some uh, good points of view that came across, some of which we were going to tweak a little, some we were going to accept. Uh, verbatim as they came to us uh, and we're looking for input uh, further and some of us have presented input and some of us have it in the process and so we want a deadline on that input. Uh, Councilman, or Councilman, Trustee Sleva did a nice job right. going yeah, through right. and, and found a whole bunch of our Yeah, I've got, I've got a whole bunch of typos. She's got, she's got some more mine. She's got some typos here to correct. Uh, 
You won't like my format because it's not so pretty right now. Okay. Well, it's, if I can barely read it. <laughs> yeah. If if you folks feel that, I mean, if there's if there's something major that needs to be discussed tonight or changed, that's the one thing. But if there's just more corrections or something, I have Trustee Bryce sent us some some uh, corrections too. Uh, unless there's kind of a change in direction or something, then. So I need a correction and I'll okay. send it back out for final draft. Would you like a deadline for those who need that? I'd, I'd, <laughs> <laughs> I'd kind of like to have it by the end of the week if you could. I mean, if, if it's a choice between getting the, the master plan survey done by tomorrow and this, you know, two weeks would be fine. Okay. If you can get it done by the end of next week and get it to me, that'd be great. And uh, Wayne, can we go back up to the, uh, the master plan? So sure. in the planning uh, committee meeting minutes, uh, uh, Larry Hayden suggested in the, the Bob second in a, a tentative, tentative, I'd say tentative meeting for November 13th, pending availability is why I'm saying tentative. Is I'd like to res respectfully request that we move it seven days out to the 20th, uh, November and, 20th. And, and uh, I also know that the the chair of the planning commission did not like that date either because he was previously or he had a prior engagement. I was wondering why he voted name, but that's why. So I was coming back. back. <laughs> <laughs> it's called uh, the rites of passage in the fall of uh, November. Yeah, that's right. So is like that a better? Is that a better? <laughs> what, is that how you I see it like or something? Yeah. Well, 15th well, of well, that's, you know. Well, it's yeah. called preparation for it. Yeah, that's right. We got to think about it. Yeah, we're trying to keep we're trying to keep four hundreds, you know, safe and stuff. But okay. Not letting go up. So safety. Twentieth. Are you talking about November twentieth then? I guess we have to go back to the planning commission and yeah, see if yeah. the twentieth is okay. I, I, I know that you're not going to get the objection from uh, from me from uh, the chair of commission, planning, the president of the or the chair of the planning commission. I know he won't object. What? Well, day is that on you? So that a Tuesday then? Yes. So okay, because our, our meeting probably is the twenty sixth then, right? Twenty second of November is a, is a Thursday. I'm, I was suggesting just move it to the twentieth. So right? Seven days. days out, Tuesday, uh, oh, Tuesday the, tw the following Tuesday, Thursday. Excuse me. Okay. Well, uh, well, it has to go through McKenna. It has yeah. to go through DDA yep. planning commission and all. So it's, it can't be an easy fix. It has to be. A, let's I figure it out and ask at the end. See what we can do. So we got, we got three on this board. We got three on this board right here. That have a well, we still would have a quorum without you. Without you guys <laughs> well, I don't know what Mark's uh, <laughs> position <laughs> is on that topic. <laughs> she won't be here. <laughs> thank, thank you. Uh, good point. The last thing you find me doing. So if we keep that date, we have an all-female quorum. Uh, whatever. <laughs> you can have your way. November twentieth. All right. Excellent. Okay, fifteen. I have fifteen on our agenda village manager's report. We have a hand up. Budget information if there's questions. Draw your attention to the reminders about the meeting Wednesday. And now I'll try to see if we can change the other one. And we did the the uh, traffic guard or the traffic crossing lights did come in, but Bob and I, when we went down and looked at it, uh, decided to spend uh, the extra money in order to post because they're going to be there for like 10 years and. We looked at what we got, plus putting it on a square pole was two things. Number one, it looked really tacky and looked like it wouldn't hold up, maybe. So we ordered the aluminum pulse. It does another thing. It allows you to turn the head of the solar collector uh, such that, because it's on a curve, so if you have a square post, you got to put the sign in the solar collector in a certain direction. Point it, get the optimal travel. So we 
bought the round post, and that should be here Wednesday. And that one is totally solar. Is that also battery? totally totally solar? Uh, it's obviously got a battery in it because it's got to run at night. So that solar collector motor, they yeah. call it, collects the energy and charges the battery, and uh, so that should be. They're digging the. We've done the mistake thing. We're digging a nice cement, and it'll look nice and be a four and a half inch pole, aluminum pole with a nice cast base and stuff. So it'll look really nice and do a good job. Um, did the surveyor finish? Of putting in the stakes all around the, um, the park. I'll have to check because he came back. He came back and put a bunch, of, bunch more stakes in and met with some residents and and that. So as far as I'm concerned, he's done. He's he said he was going to come back. I thought there was going to be some additional. He said he was going to come back, okay. but I know that he didn't. Like he was in my yard. And then I put uh, concrete monuments where the stakes were, so they weren't sitting up. And we were having to move them. So I have a, a concrete blocks in the, my lawn now. Okay. So speaking of that, um, I would like the council to consider. So my swing set borders that line, so part of the swing sets over the line. And I thought it was going to be easy enough to put on rollers, but the bottom part of the swing set's rotted, so I'm going to have to rebuild it. And uh, it'll have to be this uh, spring is when I going to get to that project. So uh, I would hope that he grant me the same reprieve the dumpster people got to put their, their fences around their dumpsters. So uh, I have no problem with that. You can have an extension. You know, yeah, to extend it to the, Thank you. And uh, well, now what about the other gentleman? Uh, I see his property's for sale. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to. That that would be a little tougher. He's got to probably take care of that before he sells the property. I would hope so, yes. Yeah, that'll be part of the survey, so I need to shoot him off a letter and okay. tell him to correct that part of the sale. Neither of them are huge issues, but they, no. they're, they need to be cleaned up eventually. Okay. What's that issue? Oh, there, there's encroachment on both sides, on both properties, that where the 47-acre uh, Orkville Wildlife Preserve, Preservation Park, yeah, Preservation Park butts up to Mill Street. As you're going up the hill, up Mill Street, you know, uh, 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 Mr. Eshman's property is to the east, and there's another property, and I don't know the house number up top of the head, is to the west. And he has a, a shack. It's not anything big. It's a playhouse or a, I don't even think it's a hunting blind. It was a, a shed or something. Some kind of a shed that's straddling the line. In, in his defense, it was there before he bought the house. So more than likely. More than likely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, more than likely. So he didn't put it there, it was always there. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd just like to, to uh, ask again on this uh, ordinance violation tracking report if you could enumerate the lines, it'd be great for reference later on. And what do you mean? Enumerate. Number them. Number. Oh, number okay. And then. Um, the number of chickens that are in there when it pertains to the chickens, just so we have a tracking on the report for that. And so now this is all up to date, Bill? Yeah, except for we closed another one today. Okay, that's good. So, as long as it's closed, not open. Okay. Do we have any open chickens now? Are they all closed? All closed. Okay, it's good. It's good. Everybody's got their permits? Everybody's got their permits. How many tools are there? Everybody's six. How many tools? There's six total permits? Six total permits. And then of the six, what? How many is the? I guess what's the most chickens at any one site? And what's the least? Most we had was eleven. Least we had was four. All right. And the ones with eleven are told that they can't expand their. They were told. They were told when I inspected, and they were told in the letter that granted their permit. So I can't add to the flock. And the peacocks are gone, to the best of my knowledge. Are we getting anywhere on uh, uh, sixty? On sixty Naren, is that? Uh, is that? Are we moving anywhere? Or I, are we having any dialogue with the, the property owner at all? If we could find out who the property owner is, basically, we're sending we're sending letters to the.
property owner of record. Uh, the last time that the lawn got mowed, it got mowed by someone other than us. Um, the truck, we have done an extensive, I've engaged uh, Lieutenant Glover and we found out that the truck wasn't in the owner's name. And we've uh, I've tried to contact the owner of record left several phone calls uh, getting ready to send them a letter down there but it's like we don't know if the person the last time the truck was registered was in 2015 plate didn't match the registration um, and it's it's difficult to uh, it's a pretty extensive legal process to claim a vehicle on private property you know, it's a little easier if it's abandoned out in the street or abandoned in a parking lot. You can or someone else's owner. I'm sorry, what did the owner say about that vehicle? The owner hasn't said nothing. The, the owner I've called and I was actually did a search and found their phone number and called and left several messages on their answering machine and they have not called the office back. Um, I have a address that I think belongs to them. To the owner trying to verify that with Glover. We'll send them a letter, but they haven't responded to it. You going to send it certified? Yeah, we will. We haven't had a lot of luck with certified, to be honest with you. People um, see a certified letter, uh, we'll probably send it certified without a without a village Wardenville label on the outside that I sometimes they accept it. But. Does it pose a safety risk at all? Currently, I mean, I can't say that it poses a safety risk. It's got four flat tires. So it's all locked up. You can't get in it. I mean, I have I'm not. Uh, no, I have not gone on the property because I can't. I can't go on the property. Uh, but yet, uh, the police went on the property and said that there was actually tools and stuff like that. In it. So. Um, and it's possible that the person it's registered to is not the person who's responsible for it. You Correct. could have easily sold it and not changed it. And Correct, because like we said, the truck has not been registered since 2015 and the plate that was on it. What's it take to remove it? Court, a court order, go to court. And how long do we wait before we go after the court order? I'm start on it now. That's engaging, the, engaging an attorney and all that good stuff. Because even if know, they sold it, it's still registered to that person. They're still responsible because correct. So they're not because I had that happen. You are not responsible as long as you have a proof of sale. You are not responsible as long as you have a proof of sale. But assuming that they don't. So if we were to, where would the vehicle go if it were to be removed? It goes to an impound lot. Impound lot, and then somebody's going to have to pay for that. Uh, so we, we would have to. We would have to when you take it from my understanding talking to Glover was that we would have to guarantee payment for the fee of the rental. So, you know, you gotta pay, it's a, it's a terrible situation. So we'd have to add that. I'm gonna avoid it, to be honest, because have to add I gotta pay for an attorney. Exactly. I gotta pay for an attorney to get it removed. Right. I gotta pay for a tow company to get it taken to an impound lot. Then I gotta guarantee payment of the rental of the impound lot, so you know, in order to get that truck moved out of there, and someone I don't know if they're foreclosing or what they're doing on the property, I might wind up spending several thousand dollars on a truck that's probably only worth you know, fifteen hundred bucks. <laughs> um, let me. You know, so it seems to me the cheapest route would be is to try to find either either of those two and ask them permission to remove it if it's correct. light. They're going to get cited in a court order, so it's easy, easier for us to remove, give us permission to remove it and be done with it. A couple hundred bucks, whatever, I and mean, we're done. And it adds to the complex as the person, the owner, appears to be about, about 85 years old. Um, so I don't know if this is part of the of an estate, but, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, we've done it, it's kind of like you're trying to do private eye work, you know. But it, but it's registered to him, right? Yeah, it's registered. So that, I mean, that's, if you get his permission to get rid of it and therefore we will take care of it, then I think, I think uh, 
kind of globally support that. Have we have we sent registered letters out? At all? No. I uh, I'm going to start there. <laughs> you know, the, you know, on the other side of the fence, you know, we talked about the, the gentleman with the, the dumpster wanting a, a little variance there, but you know, it's it's what this is all about. The, there are neighbors that are looking at that every day. And you know, why are we doing it if we're not enforcing it or putting some teeth into it? And you know, so if I were a neighbor looking at the junk card, not weeks or months, but years. Uh, it's time to go. Time to go. No. Any other opinions? I would agree with the time to go. I'll spend the money. I was just going to say, so if you're pursuing the house and we get that solved and the car is the responsibility of the homeowner, that's all in one. But if we decide to pursue a car separately from a house and we put a bunch of money into a car, when it could well, be keep in mind, package deal, I, what, depending yeah, on the yeah, answer, I mean, keep in why mind, would what you I've separate? Got, what I've got with the house is I've got a blight. We've got a specific ordinance that talks about you know noxious weeds. So you go on, you mow the lawn, and you charge them a hundred dollars to mow the lawn. That goes on their you know you send them a bill. They don't pay the bill. It goes on their tax bill. So whoever buys the house, you know, we sit on. You know, hundred dollar. We took over a property years ago, didn't we? Because it was lack of taxes, etc. Wasn't uh, didn't we? Uh, I think it was a property can't put it. Yeah. Purple panels. Yeah. The house has now been torn down. Yeah. Right. That's right. It's, right. There, it's a lot now. And it was split between the two owners, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the uh, one owned it, and then the other they sold to. Okay. It's yeah. still one owner. And people owned it. Kevin Maddox has owned Maddox has owned it to right. the house that's on the north of the old lot. But when you say uh, the bill, you're going to spend money. At this point, we're just going to send registered letters, Correct. and you're going to try to contact them for permission to remove the vehicle, right? We're not talking about going to court yet. You got to go first things first. All right. If the person is 85 years old, are they local? I mean, can we buy it? Buy it? I think Maybe we can go visit them. But <laughs> so you could have to increase my rate of pay <laughs> and pay for my CCW or something. Lover can go. We'll pay for your, we'll we'll pay for your transportation. <laughs> your yeah, we pay mileage stuff. Go on, property, knock on doors here, right? Just so that for maybe for next time, it's like a lot of these that have been open since April. Um, it has contact and office repairs need to follow. There's no dates in there, but you just kind of, um, where, you know, where. Which one are you talking about? I'm sorry. Oh, there's several of them. Um, the dumpster. The dumpster stuff. ones? Yeah, there's. Yeah, that, I mean, we're working we're with all of them, so. Right. Um, and then there's some other ones that just say contact and office follow, but there's not any dates as far as um, after the first notice. So that was in April, so I'm sure we would have done a second notice or something by now. So just to kind of clean those up or where we're at with the status is. What do you mean by closed date? It's, it's a done deal, it's closed. It's, 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 action it's taken. completed. Right. right. Okay, that, that, was, that was it. Infraction issue date, they're all blank. So they did. That's, that's when you write a ticket. Right, you write a ticket. Okay, so what about the, the car and the house we're talking about? We never wrote a ticket yet. And the house or the car. No, there's just the one here that there was a ticket written on. But the those point are not responsive on it, then you expect a non response on the ticket. So yeah. to me, if you get a ticket to get this the general yeah. over the gentleman's approval to remove yeah. it, right? yeah. um, that would be the easiest. Okay, okay just All right. to treatment um, how did that go with Bob you know with the, his um, training on that and he's Trump is going out and treating the Frank Mighty's in the village no no he did no, not absolutely not no Frank Mighty's uh, you need a you need a permit right but I thought he was going to training for that no he has not gone to training for that to the best of my knowledge and 
you'll, you'll was, have to hire a certified, yep. we'll have to hire a certified treatment person. We'll have to make sure that we have a permit right now. Because um, there was a lady that came from Oakland County right. last year and he was going to be going and, and doing that and treating her, so that never happened? Not to okay. the best of my knowledge. Okay. He's, uh, no, because we hired, uh, we did, I went to a SISMA meeting. Uh, we did participate in the uh, Oakland County right away program. I know I sent out a note on that. We had a very small portion of treatment area that, that we yeah. were able to in the right away. Uh, they paid 50% of that. Our, our bill was a grand total of $50. Uh, I have contacted two of the companies, because Frank my treatment season's over. I've contacted two of the companies and I want them to come in this winter and give us a quote on what it would take to treat the village. Could you just double check for next meeting of what happened? Because I know that the lady from Oakland County said it was it's very simple to do. She was going to show it was minimal. It, it like was minimal expenses. Yeah. yeah, that there was resources at Oakland County, and that was a year ago. We could just but we could just check that out. So it, is time, it is time sensitive though. Okay. Sure. So the season of the year. Yeah. yeah. So just for next year. But didn't we didn't we pay to get into this? Uh, we didn't, no. We didn't go. I thought we did. We, we decided to wait until we had um, the manager in place. Oh. That was delayed. But I got the impression they were going to give us grants. That's that's what the, the that's grants, the the grants are. So that we could find someone to treat these fragments. Right. The grants are they that go through the SISMA. They get grant. They get the grant money. They right. might get like they might get like fifty thousand dollars to treat the whole county. Mm -hmm. So our portion of the treatment they decided to do road right away this year. Okay. So our portion. Of the major open county board right away was $100, so we had to pay $50 for our share. It's a 50% grant. They, uh, I, what, I, what I would like to do is, you're not going to cure Fragmites if you don't have a, if you don't have a village-wide treatment program. So, yeah. what, what I need to do is get someone who's now actually knowledgeable and a treatment people in here to give us a quote. Because then the next leg of that thing is you've got to get permission from the private property owners there to come on their property and treat the Fragmites on their property. Uh, a lot of communities are not, uh, not paying for treatment on private property. So that's the other bridge that when I get this quote, what we're going to have to see is what what the uh, what are we willing to pay for? You know, and put it in the budget for. Okay. Well, I have nothing else on the reminders. Okay. Uh, moving on then to item 16 public comments on non agenda items. Do we have any comments, questions on anything else under the sun? Aha. A live wire here. Write your, state your name and address if possible. I'm Anna Cole and I live at 436 Edward Street. Nice to meet you. So I'm not sure how this like falls into it. It was just something I noticed in the last meeting um, when it came to wording ordinances. And this happened to go with, um, for an example, I'm going to use this. Um, but it, it can apply to any time you're writing an ordinance. Um, when it, it had to do with the chicken thing, when they were talking about breeding insects, and I noticed that like it was getting specific with the insects, but not specific enough. And to me, I kind of felt like my concern was that if you're not, if you're getting that specific without getting even more specific, then a person would actually, they're already violating the ordinance. Point. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I get, and that could be applied, like I said, to other ordinances. That was just my concern: is that if you're going to get that specific, you need to be a little bit more specific, because then that leaves it open to, I'm, I'm, I'm already breaking this ordinance because it wasn't specific enough. Do you have an example? 
Yeah, about the breed, the breeding of the insects, like if they're an invasive yeah. species or whatnot. If it's insects, that that's what you know. Um, that's that's where I. <sighs> Sorry, okay, um, that's what triggered it. But I started thinking about that, and that you know how many other ordinances are you know. Are people breaking already because they weren't word, worded correctly or specific enough? It kind of just leaves it open to where somebody's already, they could already be breaking the ordinance. Yeah, we've had that happen already this, this past year. So, <laughs> so there, was just, there was just a concern I had because, and that's it. That's all. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Um, Additional items from trustees. Anything? Parents to always go. Oh, well, I'll start now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything additional. Uh, okay. <laughs> I've complained about small friends. <laughs> That's enough. Nothing. Wayne, did, um, I have to ask, is this your last meeting? Uh, I believe it is technically, unless there's some kind of a, a tie vote coming up uh, at on November 6th, there's something that's not open and shut or something because uh, technically the, the successor is supposed to be sworn in by the 20th, which would be also then prior to the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, so this, this is technically my last meeting. So that being said, I'd like to thank you for the, the last four years of your service as the president. Um, I know, uh, uh, as with all the uh, Council uh, politics, etc. There's always, you know, highs and lows, but we always seem to work through things. So uh, I do want to appreciate it and thank you for your service over the last four years. Thank you. Um, it's actually eight years. Is it eight? <laughs> eight years? Wow, eight years as president? Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Because Quisenberry was on when I no, came on. No. It was four. Two, 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 Holy smokes, that's right. Right. <laughs> and, 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 uh, Just that the last few got kind of. Ten. Because you know, this is my I'll tenth year it. now. Yeah, well, you would just come out the year before, huh? No? I just finish up my tenth year, yeah. 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 Did you enter re oh, yeah, yeah. stuff or did you enter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, meet the candidates. Let's see. Uh, coming up for public and uh, all those concerned, uh, we have. Uh, OTV will be interviewing all candidates. I'm presuming that that's both township and village and school. Uh, the next, today and tomorrow, right? Okay. And that will be aired, uh, I'm thinking probably on a rotating basis. I'm suspecting uh, beginning Wednesday, uh, this coming Wednesday on 24th. Twice a day and on the OTV website. So that's, uh, that's the 24th. The, then on this, com this Friday coming up, 7 o'clock at the Senior Center, uh, the Senior Center will be hosting Faye Bendig, who is the acting uh, director of the uh, Edna Burton Senior Center, uh, has put together a format, and she's, uh, she's basically emceeing and hosting that. There's an opportunity to submit questions uh, for those in attendance and also uh, ahead of time on email. That's Again, that's uh, Friday, October 26th uh, at the Senior Center. It's beginning at 7 p.m., which is 345 Ball Street downtown. And then lastly, uh, Meet the Candidates Open House, Tuesday, October 30th from 7 to 9 at the Old Town Hall. Now that will be I don't think there's any Q&As on that, as, uh, as I understand it. I believe it's open format. It's open format. Uh, people just come in and ask questions of each candidate individually. And that will be for uh, Brandon Township running? Township, village, and, village and, and school board. School board. School board. Just a little meet and greet. Including the library right in. That's the library. Right. Yeah. There's one library right in. OK, so basically, again, that's a meet and greet. And each candidate, I'm presuming, will be nestled in one corner of the building or the room, and then you can ask questions of that candidate. Uh, 
that's, that's what I understand the format. The forum will be casual and open. Attendees will have the opportunity to mingle with the candidates that they choose at various tables. Attendees are invited to ask one on one questions, gather information, and listen to discussions with candidates in a, in a drop in setting. Okay. If you have any further questions, uh, you can contact. Uh, Tanya Bryce is putting us together, 248-425-4216. Again, 248-425-4216. Okay, are there questions, comments? No, okay. Uh, and again, uh, I do thank the public for uh, essentially putting up with me over the last eight years. It's been uh, a pleasure, uh, sometimes more of a pleasure than others, and uh, which is, by nature, uh, what happens, even though this is nonpartisan, uh, we're not talking Republican versus Democrats here. Uh, we try and keep things uh, cordial, and uh, for the most part, we have. Uh, we've had some contentious issues, and uh, so, uh, but I think we all come together. And one of the things that's lacking in, uh, in our country today is the ability to uh, discuss and uh, have different points of uh, View and and then walk away as still friends. Uh, and uh, I think uh, John McCain was a good example of that. Uh, uh, he demonstrated that very thoroughly in his final days and final years uh, in the Senate, uh, where he reached out to both sides, and, and most recently in his funeral, where he had representatives from both parties. So I think that this is there's a lot to be said because people. I think uh, I know in my my church. We have we, we have political divisions, and you know I you can't even get people in the old church to talk to each other sometimes. So it's a, it's an important thing I think that we need to work on and uh, be better uh, served by it. So again, thank you for your time, and, and uh, uh, I've appreciated all your cooperation on the part of all the council. Thank you. Thank so, you. You're quite welcome. Um, so if there's nothing else coming before the council, then. Uh, Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.